Hey, Sonic River here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Super Collider demo where we are expanding on what we had previously explored last week. Uh, simple sound synthesis using very simple sign tones and, and different kinds of oscillations, but we are extending this to binaural processing, some very simple binaural processing, uh, which is an example of multi-channel expansion. Now by multi-channel expansion, I mean it's outputting two different effects on your left and right channel. Uh, it's not going to exceed two channels because we have only two hardware speakers, uh, both whether you know that's for the computer or my studios behind my computer or my headphone cups. Uh, we only have two channels for our hardware. Uh, so it's not that interesting. It's not like quadraphonic or, or surround sound or something like that. But uh, multi-channel expansion is pretty interesting. And if you really want an in-depth look at it, just go ahead and go to Eli Field Steel's tutorials. They're very well done, very comprehensive, and pretty interesting, pretty engaging. Uh, but we will work with two channels and you will hear the effects of uh, this kind of back and forth interplay between the left and the right ear. And without further ado, let's just go ahead and take it away. I do highly recommend listening to this video with headphones. You'll hear the difference a little bit better than just with your computer speakers. So we're going to continue on with the synth depths, the, the model of our synth depth we had worked previously last week. But instead of a sine tone oscillation, we are going to be working with a sawtooth oscillator using our Eugen LF saw. And for here, for our arguments, we have freak A and freak B at 50 hertz and at 51 hertz. And this will be set to two channels. So freak A being channel zero or our left speaker, left headphone, and freak B being channel one or our right headphone. As you can see here, we've got our inputs and outputs. So uh, whatever you hear at zero is your left and at one is your right, just as a recap of how the order of execution works, or I would say uh, audio configuration works in Super Collider. So actually pretty much in anything regarding computer hardware. So I'm rambling. Let's go ahead and evaluate this and hear it for ourselves. So that's a nice muted saw tone or saw tone, not sine tone, sawtooth. A very nice sawtooth oscillation. I had a nice muted tone at this frequency. Let's go ahead and raise this frequency just a little bit by 10 hertz. A little bit warmer. And I did forget to mention that we have the low pass filter here with the default cutoff of 500 hertz. Let's go ahead and really brighten the sound. A nice nasally brightness there and maybe reduce it to 1,000. And maybe something bright at a low frequency. And then something quite muted. Yeah, I like that. I like that effect a lot. But, but you can hear a thickness. If you keep these frequencies quite close, you would hear that, you know, thick interplay going between the ears. It would be different if I did something like 50 hertz in the left ear and you know, 80 hertz in the right ear. Obviously you hear two different tones, but it doesn't have that beating pattern because the frequencies are not close to each other. So if you want a nice thick bi binaural processing effect, I would keep the frequencies quite close and I would keep them low, you know, uh, something Something fun, like a 20 and, oh, I want to do a decibel, like a float. I, I think we can, right? <laughs> Let's see. It's quite nice. It's like this thudding, this little light thudding going on in your ears. So I like that a lot. All right, moving down to 
not not too far down, uh, we've got our two channel cutoff. So now we're going to have different cutoff frequencies, uh, two different cutoff frequencies, one for each of our ears or you know hardware outputs. So same oscillation with the same envelope, nice slow attack and release. Um, but now we have a, a, a low pass filter A, as I label it here, with one frequency and low pass filter B at, at another frequency. And I've applied it as another signal. And then I just simply scale it with the envelope and amplitude as we've done before. So let's hear how this sounds. We should hear some difference. So here, just get some of that out. <laughs> uh, we, we've got 20 hertz in our left ear and 21 in our right ear, but our left ear is gonna have a very low cutoff at 200 and then a very high cutoff in our right ear at 2000. Let's go ahead and hear it. That amplitude is a little bit low, so let me add just a little bit more volume here. Woo, yeah, that's nice. You can see it, the, the stethoscope, the scope there, um, how dramatic that looks. So if you have headphones at your disposal, you'll hear that brighter thudding. That It's not really clicking, but it's a, it's a very bright um, pattering at your right ear. And then hardly any sound, that's not true, uh, a rather muted sound comparably in your left ear. Let's go ahead and switch them so you know I am correct. That's pretty cool. I, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, now uh, we're, we are adding a pulse. So uh, a pulse oscillation that, that, that is pretty much clipped off, um, at, you know, from the positive to the non, uh, to the negative value. Um, so a little bit different, um, not so linear as the sawtooth oscillation, uh, but we are using the same arguments here um, and, uh, and the same synth def. I just wanted to hear a, a, a bit of a different characteristic. So we'll go ahead and evaluate that and uh, go ahead and reduce it all the way to 10 pulses per second on the left channel and 11 pulses per second on the right channel with a somewhat faster release. Let's hear how this sounds. I do like that. I feel like it could be a little bit louder. Might be a little too loud. I'm I'm nervous. Let's just, let's just do that. Oh, I feel like it could be louder. Yeah, that's quite nice. Um, let's add quite a dramatic difference. Yeah, and then maybe very very low. really hear a difference that low. At least I can't. Um, so we'll do 300, uh, maybe 500. Yeah. Yeah. Quite nice. All right, let's go ahead and add a pea pine to the mix. And by the way, if you wanted to know what the what the envelope looks like. I just always put this, this line of code before my synth depths if I want to know what a good envelope or good shape of the sound would look like. So most, most of it is, in fact, actually I'm using this envelope for every synth. This is the nature of the sound where we have a relatively, uh, yeah, comparably shorter attack. Actually for here, it's going to be, uh, one second, uh, with a nice wrap, uh, um, uh, Grab a drop and then a little bit of tail here. I think I did that for last week as well. All right, adding um, an event for every second, once per second as the default. Uh, I have very low pulse, pulses, about, about 20. So you'll hear more of a thudding than an actual oscillate, oscillating frequency. Um, but with some different cutoffs. So let's let's hear how this sounds. Ah, 
I just realized. We'll stop this. And I, I got to get rid of the synth here because that's that's not me anymore. Uh, I'm actually pulse one right now. I'll try this again. And actually, I'll uh, I will definitely boost this up a little bit. That's scary looking. That is so scary looking. Yeah. All right, good. And uh, you can use the method resume. It works just like the play method, at least for the p-bind. I noticed it, it's not um, it's not working for the upcoming p-bind death, but that might just be a glitch or me working in this document. I don't know. But you can at least use resume for the p-bind. But to, to make things simpler, just use dot play. Works the same way. And then let's go ahead and add p-bind def to it so we can here are some different uh, values. And actually, let me, oh, I'm gonna try. I don't wanna go too much with, with output. I, I think this is safe. So every two seconds we have an event occurring. Let's hear how that is. I like that fast release, uh, but let's, let's just kind of play a little bit more. Maybe 10,000 here. Ooh. Ooh. Scary. And then uh, maybe something like, well, I'm going to reduce the cutoff for this. That seems at the center. That's a, that's a weird, unusual effect. I'll have to look into that a little bit more why that is so. Uh, we'll reduce it just to a thousand. Interesting. You can stop. You can play. And there we go. So yeah, a little bit of uh, binaural processing for you. It's I, I think it's really fun. And I think it would be a little bit... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I think it'd be a little bit more engaging with something like a reverb effect, you know, putting it through a reverb effect and then adding patterns to add rhythmic variances, especially with pulse. Uh, sawtooth works, but something with pulse I think would be quite fun. So I'll explore that as we go. But until then, thanks for watching and listening. Until I see you next, keep producing the art you love, keep preserving the art you love, and have fun experimenting on your own. And until I see you next, have a great day.